When I posted a pic of me in my skinny jeans, the K Squad wanted to know, Kate, how'd you do that? Hey, K Squad, this is when I hope your notifications are turned on just in case a bonus video pops up like it is today. I am thrilled to do a collaboration video today with Sensible Living with Money Mom, Jan from NYC Saves Money, and How Debbie Saves. Thank you ladies for including me in this collab. I'm so excited to be here with you. When Money Mom put out the bat signal, ladies, I'm looking for videos on taking action and getting results. And she asked me to talk about my fitness journey with you guys, give you some tips and tricks on what I'm doing to reach my goals. And I said, heck yeah, let's do this. If you haven't read Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, I'm gonna first recommend it. And secondly, I'm gonna let you know that I'm gonna use four of the habits today to help illustrate how I best attacked my goals so that hopefully it's helpful for you. Abe Lincoln shared with us a long time ago that his biggest productivity secret was to use sharper tools to get the job done effectively. He said, give me six hours to chop down a tree and I will spend the first four sharpening the ax. Stephen Covey, the author of Seven Habits of Highly Effective People says one of the habits is sharpen the saw. Sharpen the saw means preserving and enhancing the greatest asset you have, which is you. You are the tool of which you get everything done. You guys, in other words, you are your own secret weapon. Don't let your wellness be optional. It's not optional. And you've got to sharpen the saw. You've got to make the tool of which you will get all the things done as sharp, as fit, as well as possible. Don't let your wellness be optional. Not optional. The second habit that I think is super effective to think about is to begin with the end in mind. Don't spend your time working aimlessly. Have a vision for your future and align your actions accordingly. That is key. You want to visualize your end result. What does the end result look like? What does it feel like? And how excited are you getting just thinking about it? And then you want to reverse engineer. What have I got to do to get there? Ask yourself along the way, does this action align with the result that I want to get? Like if you're looking to lose a certain amount of weight, does going through the drive through align with what you're trying to reach? Probably not. I use my fitness pal as my tracker of all my food, my exercise, my water intake, all that stuff. I would input into my fitness pal what you want your end goal weight to be so that you can begin with the end in mind. You might find that as you go along, the end weight is not as important as how you're feeling along the way, but I would just put it in there as something to aim for. The third habit that I want to focus on when we are working on this journey here is to put first things first. To prioritize the work you're going to put into this, focus on what's important. In this situation, it's going to be food and exercise. And I'm going to share with you that if you focus on food first, in my opinion, it's going to get you the furthest. The nutrition to me has been the most impactful, because I'll be super honest with you, there's been many times that I have not exercised as much as I had thought I would, but because I've been controlling the food and really focusing on whole foods and non-processed foods, I'm still getting results. So I'm just letting you know, from my personal experience, the food is the most important. Should you exercise? Heck yes. Our body needs exercise for all the reasons you know about. So you definitely want to exercise also. But first things first, I honestly think food is the most important. The fourth habit that is crucial, and I'm going to get into the nitty gritty here, is be proactive. Make a plan and execute the plan. Kind of like a budget, you guys. You set the budget, you execute the budget. We are going to set out with this plan to eat better, move our bodies, and get results that we want. You can't keep repeating the actions of the past and hope to get somewhere differently. 
it's not going to work. You've got to do something new. You've got to try something new. You've got to try a new path and you've got to stay consistent with it. We've got to be proactive. We've got to make a decision and we've got to make it happen. The action is what makes all this happen. I think when Money Mom was setting out to have the intention for this video, she wants the action. So what are the actions I took to get where I'm going now? Like what have I been doing to get some results? Before I share specifics, which I will in a minute, I want to let you know that back in college, my ballet teacher gave me a very valuable mindset strategy that I just want to share with you really quick. So back in college, I wanted to lose a few pounds. I wasn't really too overweight, maybe in ballet world, that would be questionable, but I wanted to just slim down a little bit. So I was talking to her about what I was doing and what, what did I need to do? This woman was a very thin woman. Like we used to be like, where are the organs? This woman was just a ballerina through and through, real lean. And she just let me know, she's like, look, when you're in college, this is a really hard time to buckle down because you're going to be up late studying. You're going to have a little study group and they're going to want to order pizza at midnight. They're going to want to have a couple drinks. They're going to eat French fries. They're going to be doing all the typical college stuff. And she said to me, you can't let yourself be lumped in as the same as them. If you have a goal that you want to reach, you can't just say to yourself, well, they're all doing it, so it must be okay. You must set yourself apart during this time when your goal is different from theirs. You have to accept that if you want to be different, you have to act different right now. And don't get sucked into the norm because what you're about to do is not normal. You want better. You want more. You want a result that some people aren't willing to put in the effort for. All right, so one of the things that I think about immediately is you want the path of least resistance. I love that expression for some reason. It just, it's like, it just feels like the path is being cleared, but you want to set yourself up for success. An example of setting yourself up for the path of least resistance is to have your food cooked ahead of time. It's making sure you have Tupperware containers to put the food in. Because I swear that some some mornings will throw me off. If I don't have the, the containers to put the food in, I'm like, ah, forget about it. I'll put this in a big one and then I'll just grab something. Like you'll have the thoughts, okay? So you want to let yourself not have any excuses to just be like, ah, I'll pick something up, whatever. You want to make sure you've got, I know that's like a minor thing, but you've got to make sure you have your containers. You've got to make sure you get your food ahead of time. You cook ahead of time. If you're doing crock pot chicken, you've got to cook ahead of time. You've got to give yourself the time. If you're doing ground beef, you've got to cook that up the night before. You've got to portion it out, put it in containers. You have to be prepared. You've got to think ahead. Some of you saw my video when I lost the initial 13 pounds, but if you haven't, I'm going to just get into it right now. So I've been intermittent fasting. I picked the eight hour eating window and fasting for 16 hours. So I eat typically between 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. every day. I don't eat past 6 p.m. and I don't eat before 10 a.m. in the morning. And most of the time I try to push that even closer toward noon, but it depends. But I have that 10 to 6 time. The reason that it starts at 10 for me is because after 6 o'clock, I like having a few hours before I go to bed for my body to digest. I feel like I sleep better than I've ever slept before doing it this way because I used to sometimes eat right before I went to bed and then I lay down have like reflux and just a couple other things like sleep disturbances when you eat too late and then try to go to bed right away. Maybe that's just me, but in my experience, that works best for me. So I kind of reverse engineered it from there. I want to be done by six because I usually go to bed around nine. So I give it three hours to kind of digest. You don't need to give it that long, but personally, it's just what I feel comfortable with. Do I have coffee in the morning? Yes, I do. Do I have creamer in the morning? Honestly, yes, I do. I've tried going black. I just don't like it enough yet. And there are some mornings where I'll just power through and just do it. But honestly, during most of this weight loss, I've lost 20 pounds, guys, in the, in the first quarter of the year. And I had creamer most days, not a ton, no sugar. I did creamer like half a tablespoon 
in my coffee. And I honestly mostly had two cups of coffee every single day. So that's like a tablespoon of creamer. Some people will say that that breaks the fast. You can experiment guys. If you can go black without the creamer, try it. But if it's absolutely horrendous, um, for me, I just really like creamer, so I'm doing it. But that is a way you could try not doing it. It might be more effective. And I have done it on some mornings and it just didn't ruin my game. You know what I'm saying? Me personally. Now, please remember, as I'm sharing this with you, it doesn't mean it's necessarily going to work for you. I'm not saying this is what you should do. I'm just sharing what I've done. And then you've got to you know, consult with your doctor if you're looking to do something drastic and come up with what's going to work for you. Make sure you check with your doctor if you're doing big changes, but I'm just letting you know this is what I'm doing. You don't have to copy me, but if there's anything that works for you, you could try aspects of it. You know what I'm saying? I'm always telling you on this channel, take what you can use, throw the rest away, do what's going to work and forget about the rest or tweak it to your liking. When I break my fast, which is between 10 and 12, I will have a big portion of protein, four to eight ounces of something, depending on what I'm having that day. I could eat eight ounces of chicken, no problem, but probably closer four to six, I would say would be typical. I would have a cup of Greek yogurt. I like Dannon Light and Fit, toasted coconut, I believe is what it's called. That's my favorite. And then I have a whole carton of raspberries, which is only like a cup. And then some days I really enjoy taking a Think bar. If you've ever had a Think protein bar, there's no sugar in them. And I sometimes I will take the protein bar and I'll actually break it up and stir it into the Greek yogurt. And it feels to me delicious. You might be thinking, Kate, that sounds super gross, but it's always like a brownie crunch or a chunky peanut butter one. And it is so good. I just stir it in. I just pretend I'm having like a blizzard from Dairy Queen, but it's really Greek yogurt and a protein bar and it tastes so good. If you're trying to go away from processed foods, don't do the Think Bar. But honestly, I do that mm, several times a week right now because I feel like I need that sweet feeling, but it's not going to hurt me much. But processed foods in general, guys, for January and February, I had very little. I had no added sugar. I had no alcohol and I had no bread for the first two months of the year, January, February. So March is kind of my play around month. I'm like, okay, what can I get away with? How can I have a little bit of the other stuff so that I'm not, you know, I, I don't know if that's sustainable. I don't think it is for me what I was just telling you. The no sugar, no alcohol, no carbs forever no thanks. I can't do that. I need to find a happy medium. So I would have that for lunch. And then for dinner, I would have, oh, I love eggs. You guys, I have breakfast for dinner. I'll have eggs, avocado, sometimes bacon, cucumbers, veggies, whatever. Maybe I make an omelet with some veggies, onions, green peppers. Um, I have skim milk at night. I drink water, but I'm not excessive with it, you guys. I probably have, I do like four water bottles that are 16 ounces. Nothing too crazy. I just drink it while I'm at my desk at work. When you get started with this, I would recommend eating similarly every day so you don't have to reinvent the wheel with your eating every day. Because if you do that, then it gets a little stressful. You're like, oh, I need to come up with, you don't need to come up with new, fun, and exciting recipes to start just get started. What I'm eating, like I love either crock pot chicken or rotisserie chicken. I mean, I love that. So I love that. I love raspberries. The Greek yogurt, I, I, the Dan and Light and Fit, I really like some other Greek yogurts I'm not into, but that one I really like. And I also love the Think Bars. If you don't want to do processed food, don't do the Think Bar. You can do anything else. I also, sometimes I'll have, instead of the yogurt, I'll have cottage cheese or I'll have a string cheese. It's usually some form of dairy for lunch that I enjoy. That's just what I do. And then at dinner time, more on the veggies, more on the protein. Dinner, it's either chicken, ground beef, or like I said, eggs eggs. Love avocados. Those are involved as much as I can. I enter every morsel of food that goes into my mouth on my fitness pal. And at 
first you're gonna think this is tedious, but I swear it's worth it. Just like your budget, if you don't track, it'll get away from you. And I experienced this myself. Sometimes I'm like, ah, you know, just a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And it makes a difference. You wanna track everything at first, or at least I do. But then once it's in there, first of all, there's a, a barcode so you can scan stuff. So like you can just scan your milk, you can scan your eggs and then it's in there. So you can just like repeat them. You can even repeat meals. And what I do is I plan the night before. So I will put all the food that I'm going to eat the next day. Like say I'm just hanging out watching some TV at the end of the day. I will input all the stuff that I'm going to eat the next day so that when I get up in the morning, First of all, I will cook ahead of time the night before if it's something that needs to be. And it's almost every night I have to cook something. It's either chicken or ground beef right now that I have to cook up, you know, either the night or for two days ahead of time. But you always have to do that. So you want to do that stuff at night and then you execute in the morning. So I just put that stuff together in my lunch bag in the morning or you can do it the night before and I head out. But I know ahead of time what I'm going to be eating all day long. So I don't have to be stressing like, oh, what am I going to eat? The other thing is I track my macronutrients. And that's another thing. People do calories. People do macronutrients. Macronutrients are your protein, your carbs, and your fat. And I've actually adjusted this because when I started, my protein was super high. And then my protein is still super high. But my carbs were higher and I have lowered my carbs and I've upped the fat and it's working out so far. I don't want you to get too crazy about counting calories, but I'll tell you that my sweet spot is probably around 1500 calories. That's around what I eat every day, give or take, you know, a little bit, but that's around where it lands. But my macronutrients, and again, there's macro calculators. I'll leave one down in the description if you wanna kind of see what's right for you. You're gonna enter your height and your weight and your level of activity and it'll let you know around where you should be at to hit your goals. Remember that when we're talking about all this, everyone's gonna be completely different. So don't think you have to copy someone else's exactly because it's not gonna necessarily work the same way on your body. Your body and my body might react differently. If you're not following me on Instagram, please do, because sometimes I'll just post what I'm eating just so you guys get some meal ideas if I do anything different. I weigh in weekly. For me, it's on Fridays, but you can pick whatever day you want. You can weigh yourself every day, especially at first. Um, I know some people would be like, don't get obsessed with the scale, and you could get obsessed with the scale every day. So um, once a week, I think, is pretty fair to kind of just see where you're at. But again, do what works for you. If you feel more comfortable at first looking at it every day, I'm not going to shame you for doing that. And please don't shame in the comments, guys. If someone's like, don't do that, you've got to do what works for you. When I was going full out, you guys, with the no sugar, the no alcohol, and the no carbs, I'll be honest, that's when I felt my best. This past month, in the month of March, I've played with it a little bit. I've had a drink here and there. I've had a Hershey bar. I've had cereal once in a while and it's okay I'm I'm feeling okay about it but I honestly felt my absolute best when I wasn't doing that so I'm just letting you know I'm human and I realize that there are so many factors that come into play when it comes to food to be totally truthful I am a very emotional eater, but it's weird because I'll eat when I'm happy and I'll eat when I'm sad. So it's kind of like removing the emotional factor is hard, especially when that is the way you've been your whole life. Like I have to make a plan just like the budget, you guys. I have to make a plan. This is what I'm doing and then execute the plan and track along the way. And especially, like I said, for those first two months, I went the no excuses approach and that is very hard for some. It was very hard for me at first thinking like, okay, this is the line in the sand and I'm not going to cross it. But once you get into it and then you start feeling and seeing the progress and then your clothes start getting looser and then you are getting energy. I told you guys I'm sleeping better than ever. I was having acne 
in places and that has completely cleared up since I started eating right. And just everything feels better when I'm eating whole foods and less processed foods. So that's just like truth right there. Like it has changed my life and I want to keep going with it in that direction because I feel better than ever when I'm putting those practices into practice. Life is too short to feel crappy every day, you guys. Let me say that again. Life is too short to keep coming into every day wishing you felt and looked a different way. And I'm telling you right now, you will not regret taking action to reach your goals. You will feel better than ever. And this isn't necessarily about vanity's sake. Oh, I want to be skinny. I want to be thin. Yeah, look, it feels good to fit in your clothes. It feels good to not have to suck in your gut when you take a picture. It feels good to want to get in a bathing suit. There are many, many factors on that level, on just like a human level. Buns. And losing weight is not the answer to everything, but I'm just going to let you know, I've told you, feeling good feels good. And I'm going to encourage you guys to take action. If you've been on the fence and you've been thinking about it and the thing that you're missing is the action, I'm going to encourage you to take the action, start going for walks, start minimizing your processed food, take action. Maybe it's small actions at first, or you can go beast mode either way, but beast mode will get you where you need to go faster. But if you can't go beast mode, it's not in you, take small steps, crawl if you've got to, but take the steps forward so that you can get there. Take the action, take the small actions at first until you can take bigger steps, okay? Thank you so much, Dawn, known as Money Mom, Jan, and Debbie. Please go check out their videos next. I'm gonna leave them down in the description below. They all have their own unique topics. So I'm the only one talking about this. Go to their channels and check out what they're talking about on the topic of taking action. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up, hit subscribe, and hit the bell so you're notified each time I upload. I mainly make videos on frugal living, saving money, and budgeting, and they come out every single Friday. So I hope you will join the K-Squad each Friday as each new video releases. I can't wait to see you in the next video. Oh, and hey, after you go watch the ladies, I will leave some more videos here. If you like this topic that we're talking about, I think you'll love these also. But go check out the videos of the ladies down below, and I'll see you next time, guys. Bye.